Hello everyone. So this session is about instruments which are uh, commonly asked in the practical exams of pathology. These are the contents. So first, first is Sally's hemoglobinometer, uh, and the part of Sally's hemoglobinometer are first of all comparator. This is a comparator with brown glass, uh, brown colored glass standards. Then there is a Sally's graduated hemoglobin tube. There is a hemoglobin pipette with with a mark at twenty microliter. Then stirrer, which is a thin glass rod. So in this, uh, we do the quantitative estimation of hemoglobin in a given sample. We fill this uh, hemoglobin tube uh, with n by ten hydrochloric acid uh, till the two gram percent mark, and then we add uh, the twenty microliter of blood to this tube. We keep it for ten minutes for the formation of acid hematin, in which all the hemoglobin of this uh, sample will will get converted to acid hematin. And after ten minutes, we start adding n by ten HCl or distilled water, drop by drop. to this tube till the color of this acid hematin matches with these comparator uh, glass tubes glass rods and uh, then we take the reading at the upper meniscus and in between uh, we uh, when we add the drops of distilled water or n by 10 hcl we stir with the this thin glass rod and when we take the reading we put this glass rod at the upper end of the tube but we do not pull out this uh, glass rod entirely we just keep it at the upper part of the uh, tube and then we take the reading so that there is no uh, falsely low reading now there are also other methods of hemoglobin estimation uh, the gold standard method is sinmet hemoglobin method again this is asked in the viva then uh, in sinmet hemoglobin method we use a reagent which is uh, composed of potassium ferricyanide and potassium cyanide Other methods are alkali hematin method, oxy hemoglobin method, and more commonly used automated analyzer method. Then uh, again, another important question is the normal range of hemoglobin. We should know the value along with uh, along with the unit in which it is measured. So in males, the normal uh, range is thirteen to eighteen gram per cent or gram per deciliter. In females, the normal hemoglobin value is twelve to sixteen gram per deciliter or gram per cent. Now another important question. is uh, when do we see increased hemoglobin and decreased hemoglobin values so increased hemoglobin values are seen in case of high altitude obstructive lung disease in primary and secondary polycythemia in congenital heart disease where there is hypoxia then uh, in smoking then decreased hemoglobin values they are seen in case of anemias now you should know all the causes of anemias parasitic infestations pregnancy where in which there is a state of hemodilution then due to various drugs lead poisoning iron deficiency and kidney disease because kidney is a source of erythropoietin so kidney disease uh, will manifest as uh, decreased hemoglobin now next is the wbc pipette and rbc pipette they are also known as thoma pipette and we identify the wbc pipette by the presence of a white bead which is present in the bulb now the, what are the uses of this white bead this is generally asked in viva uh, so the white bead first of all it helps in identification that it, this is a wbc pipette secondly it will help in the mixing of the blood and the diluting fluid and thirdly this bead will also tell us whether the bulb is dry or not if this bead sticks to the wall of this bulb then it means that the uh, then that means that the pipette is wet uh, now the markings which are present in wbc pipette there are three markings one is 0.5 second is 1 and third is 11 and we add blood till the 0.5 mark and we add the diluting fluid till the 11 mark and we get a dilution factor of 20 now uh, diluting fluid which we, which we use in wbc pipette is uh, turks fluid for the total leukocyte count turks fluid which contains glacial acetic acid and 1% gentian violet uh, along with water now we use the wbc pipette along with the nubas chamber for wbc count normal wbc count is 4000 to 11000 per cubic millimeter in adults then we also use it for absolute eosinophil count platelet count sperm count then uh, cell count in cases of csf pleural fluid acidic fluid and rbc count when the patient has severe anemia or the rbc count is low in the patient now next is wbc uh, the rbc pipette the rbc pipette again it has a red bead in the bulb the bulb of rbc pipette is bigger than the wbc pipette and the markings are 0.51 and 101 we achieve a dilution factor of 200 with the rbc pipette when we fill the blood to the 0.5 mark and diluting fluid till the 101 mark 
Now the RBC relating fluids are the Hames fluid and Desis Desis fluid. Now we use the RBC pipette along with the Neubauer chamber for RBC count. Now we should know the normal RBC count, which is three point eight to five million per cubic millimeter in females and five to six million per cubic millimeter in case of males. Now again we can use RBC pipette for dilution in case of high WBC count. as we can see in cases of acute leukemias then uh, also we can use rbc pipette for dilution in case of uh, the sperm count now uh, practically in our laboratories uh, we use these micro pipettes for dilution which are uh, uh, automated and uh, we can set the amount we want to take of the blood or dilating fluid in this like in this area Uh, we can fix the amount of uh, fluid or blood we want to take and then there are uh, many tips of different capacities which fit into the uh, end of this micro pipette and we can easily use them for the dilution purpose now uh, next is the newbar chamber known as improved newbar chamber now uh, why it is called improved newbar chamber because the earlier newbar chamber had uh, 16 squares in all the uh, in all the nine big squares they were they were divided into 16 squares but in the improved newbar chamber the center square is divided into 25 squares so that's why it is called improved newbar chamber now uh, the area of this newbar chamber is 3 mm into 3 mm because this length is 3 mm again this is 3 mm and each small square this one it measures 1 mm into 1 mm that is 1 mm square now the 16 uh, small squares they are separated by bold lines and these corner squares they are further divided into small 16 uh, 16 small squares uh, when we charge this newbar chamber after uh, charging the charging should be adequate there should be no overcharging or no undercharging and after charging uh, the de depth of this chamber is 0.1 mm that is between this uh, uh, area of this lined area and the cover slip there is a depth of 0.1 mm so this is the improved newbars chamber uh, what is the uses of uh, this newbar chamber so the corner squares which are in blue these are used for the this can be used for the wbc count mainly and these red squares these five small red squares in the center these can be used for the rbc count and uh, the central square the whole central square can also be used for the platelet count the corner squares besides the tlc count they can also be used for the sperm count and absolute eosinophil count now in this picture we can see that uh, after the cover slip is placed the uh, distance between the uh, lined area and the cover slip is 0.1 mm so this is the depth of the newbar chamber after charging and this newbar chamber is also known as hemocytometer now next we come to the vacuum tuners or also known as vacuum tubes and they have small amount of vacuum between uh, in the in this tube there is small amount of vacuum and which helps in taking the blood sample so these vacuum tuners they have different type of color codings and because these uh, tubes contain different additives and anticoagulants so uh, some of the different vacuum tuners are pul purple top vacuum tuner then red top vacuum tuner blue top vacuum tuner and gray top vacuum tuner these are most more, uh, very commonly used in the laboratory and first uh, the purple cap vacuum tuner it has the anticoagulant edta ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid now edta is a, a useful anticoagulant because it does not affect the size and the number of the blood cells so it is used in the hematology procedures and the different salts of edta which are available commercially are first is disodium and second is tripotassium and dipotassium 
Now the potassium salts they are more soluble than sodium salts and they are more commonly used than the sodium salts. The uses of this purple cap vacutainer or the EDTA uh, vacutainer there are many uses and it is the most commonly used uh, anticoagulant in uh, hematology laboratory and the various tests which can be done with sabmel collected in this purple vacutainer are hemoglobin, RBC count, WBC count, platelet count and means the total blood counts. Then red cell indices like MCV, MCH, MCSC, packed cell volume, then uh, reticulocyte count, HbA1c, hemoglobin electrophoresis for example the hemoglobin, the fetal hemoglo hemoglobin uh, percentage. Then a test in microbiology which is done using this EDTA blood is malarial, malarial parasite by card method because in the card method the antibody is already impregnated in that card and we uh, place the antigen in the form of the EDTA blood because malarial parasite they are present inside the RBCs. So we take the EDTA blood for the card test of malarial parasite. Now mechanism action, the mechanism is that the EDTA it chelates the calcium ions which are present in the blood and which are required for coagulation. So it acts as an anticoagulant. Concentration of EDTA in these vacutainers is 1.5 plus minus 0.25 milligram per ml of blood. If EDTA is used in excess, so we have to collect the blood up to the mark which is present in the EDTA vial. If, uh, if it is not followed then excess EDTA can cause shrinkage of RBCs, WBCs and swelling of platelets and which can lead to the uh, false counts. Now the next set of vacutainers that is blue and black colored uh, vacutainers they contain trisodium citrate. Now the mechanism of trisodium citrate is that it chemically combines with calcium and removes it so it acts as an anticoagulant. Now there are uh, blue cap vacutainers and black cap vacutainers. So uh, the blue cap vacutainers they contain 3.2 percent weight by volume of sodium citrate and uh, they contain the uh, anticoagulant and blood in the ratio of 1 is to 9. While the black top vacutainer they have 3.8 percent weight by volume of trisodium citrate and they contain the anticoagulant and blood in the ratio of 1 is to 4. Now this is very important for the viva. This is asked the difference between these two vials. Although both of them contain trisodium citrate but the ratio is different. Ratio and percentage of uh, trisodium citrate in both these vials are different. Now the blue vial is used for all the tests of coagulation studies while the black vial is used for the ESR studies and ESR studies by the Westergren method. Now, uh, what all tests they come under coagulation studies again this is important question. So prothrombin time, activated partial thromboplastin time, thrombin time, D dimer, uh, fibrinogen levels, factor assays all these come under the coagulation studies. Now next file is green cap vacutainer which is uh, which contains heparin as an anticoagulant. Heparin is a natural anticoagulant and it can be uh, sodium salt or lithium salt. The mechanism is that it inactivates thrombin and uh, important, uh, important role of heparin is that it preserves the red cell size. So it is used uh, in osmotic fragility studies particularly and also it can be used to study the enzymes in the, inside the RBCs like the G6PD studies and also pyruvate kinase deficiency. Now, for flow cytometry also the blood in hep heparinized blood can be used and flow cytometry uses heparinized blood or EDTA blood. Now uh, it is not useful for the WBC and platelet counting as it causes the clumping of the cells and also it is not used for the uh, preparation of the peripheral blood smear because it gives a faint bluish background color after staining. So it is the most important use is in the osmotic fragility studies and second commonly in the enzyme studies. Now another vacutainer is grey cap vacutainer which contains fluoride as an additive and anticoagulant is EDTA in this file. Now important additive is fluoride which is added because the blood uh, which is collected in this vial can be used for blood glucose estimation and fluoride 
it inhibits the enzymes of glucose metabolism like enolase so it uh, maintains the level of glucose in the uh, blood sample so this is a important vacuum tainer which is used for the blood glucose estimation now these two vials this red cap vial and yellow cap vial or also known as gold cap vial so these vials they contain uh, they don't contain any anticoagulant and they can contain certain clot activators and these are used when we want the studies to be done on the serum because in these vials the blood will undergo coagulation and after coagulation what we get we get serum so there is a difference between plasma and serum when we centrifuge anticoagulated blood what we obtain we obtain plasma while what we obtain after the blood get coagulated in these tubes we get serum so serum is plasma minus the coagulation factors so uh, first is this red cap vial it contains no anticoagulant sometimes it can contain clot activating substances like eolin and this both these tubes they can be used for the serum testing and uh, serum testing which is which can be done for liver function test like sgpt sgot ggt alp and all then renal function test which can include test like serum creatinine blood urea nitrogen then lipid profile which can include tests like uh, serum cholesterol serum triglycerides then hdl ldl levels vldl levels all these come under lipid profile then serum electrolytes sodium potassium levels in the serum and thyroid function test which include tsh serum t3 t serum t4 so all these tests can be done with both these vials so what is the difference between these two vials now this gold cap vial this is more expensive than this red cap vial and it is generally used when we have to transport a sample to a distant place now sample is collected in a village suppose and it has to be taken to a city so we will prefer this gold cap vacuum tainer because it contains a acrylic gel polymer which helps in separating the clot which is formed from the serum and it keeps uh, it preserves the serum for a longer period of time also the walls of this uh, gold cap vacuum tainer they are coated with silica which acts as a clot activator so the main difference between these two vacuum tainers red and yellow is that so uh, that the uh, yellow cap vacuum tainer contains this gel acrylic gel which separates the serum and the clot so it is also known as serum separator tube and the serum separator tube it preserves the serum for a longer period of time it is it is generally used when the sample has to be transported to a over a longer distance so basically both these tube both the sample in both these tubes can be used for the uh, the test which are done on serum like all these test so it is important to know about both these vacuum tainers so this is a summary of all these vacuum tainers now we come to the needles which are used in bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy so under the heading of bone marrow examination we conduct two ex two examinations one is bone marrow aspiration and other is bone marrow biopsy in bone marrow aspiration we uh, want to aspirate the marrow material which is uh, liquid in state so the hematopoietic tissue which we uh, want to aspirate from the bone marrow the marrow the medullary cavity the medullary uh, cavity of the bone it is done in bone marrow aspiration and what do we do in biopsy in biopsy we want to take out the core of the tissue the bony tissue in the bone marrow so it will take out the hematopoietic tissue as well as the bony trabecular in the form of a cylindrical core and this tissue will be submitted in formalin for histopathological study while bone marrow aspiration we will aspirate the cells of the hematopoietic tissue and we will smear it over a slide and we will do the cytological examination so this is the difference between bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy in both the conditions we are uh, doing these tests to diagnose various hematological conditions now for bone marrow aspiration what needles we use we use two types of needles one is the sala needle now we can remember that uh, this needle has a screw which uh, is also known as guard uh, so this is sala so as for screw so it has got a screw that needle which has got a screw is sala needle so sala needle this screw acts as a guard it tells us how much deep we have to go into the bone till the bone marrow is is reached now uh, the part of this needle are 
when I already told the screw then there is a stylet and this is the needle so stylet will keep the uh, lumen of this needle patent we will put this stylet into this needle now needle is hollow and we put the stylet inside this and after that we start uh, piercing the cortical bone of the patient when the needle reaches the uh, medullary cavity then uh, uh, suddenly the resistance is lost and we then remove the stylet after removing the stylet we uh, put a syringe into this into the back of this needle and then we aspirate the bone marrow now second needle is the clima needle again it has got a needle and stylet but it has not got a screw like uh, the sala needle in this the guard is movable over this needle so this whole thing is the guard so the sala needle and clima needle they are generally used for bone marrow aspiration now uh, important question is that the bone marrow aspiration uh, what are the sites from where we can take the bone marrow so these are the sites where in our body red marrow is seen so uh, most common site is posterior superior iliac spine in adults then followed by anterior superior iliac spine sternum we generally use this site in case of obese patient where we are not able to reach the marrow through the psis then another site is iliac crest then spinous processes of the vertebrae and in infants we uh, take the bone marrow aspiration sample from upper end of tibia again these sites are very important to know now next important question is the indications of bone marrow examination so bone marrow aspiration is done for various rbc disorders like diagnosis of megaloblastic anemia pure red cell aplasia pancytopenias pancytopenias is decreased in the number of rbc wbc as well as the platelets next indication is wbc disorders like leukemias acute leukemias subleukemic and aleukemic leukemias in subleukemic leukemias the blast in the bone in the peripheral smear they are, they are less than 20% while in aleukemic leukemia the blast are not seen in the peripheral smear and in both these conditions the blast will be present more than 20% in the bone marrow so uh, for these categories of leukemia it is important to do the bone marrow examination then uh, megakaryocytic disorders like immune thrombocytopenic uh, purpura then undiagnosed thrombocytopenias we can do the bone marrow to assess the status of megakaryocytes then in myeloproliferative neoplasms like polycythemia vera chronic myeloid leukemia essential thrombocythemia we can do the bone marrow aspiration then uh, we can also uh, use the aspirate to stain uh, with the pearls persian blue stain and by this we can assess the iron stores especially in case of iron deficiency anemia and we can also use this to demonstrate the ring sideroblast which are seen in case of myelodysplastic syndromes then in various storage disorders like gaucher's disease neiman pix disease we can use the bone marrow aspiration in parasitic infestation malaria leishmanias and also it can help to diagnose metastasis granulomas but bone marrow biopsy is a superior uh, method to diagnose the focal conditions like metastat metastasis or the presence of a granuloma uh, then another indication is the therapeutic indication so bone marrow aspiration uh, this needle can be used for bone marrow transplantation now next is uh, the bone marrow biopsy needle the most commonly used needle is the jamshedi trifin biopsy needle and it is again uh, got stylet needle and this is a guide which is used to push the biopsy after it is obtained so we uh, push this guide uh, inside this needle and we push the biopsy fragment which is uh, located at the tip of the needle and then after obtaining this biopsy we put it in formalin and send for the histopathological examination so in biopsy we have to take a core of the marrow tissue in this needle now bone marrow biopsy where it is indicated it is indicated in case we get a dry <coughs> dry tap uh, in the bone marrow aspiration so dry tap can be uh, obtained in bone marrow aspiration where the, we are not ab or able to obtain any material in the bone marrow aspiration in cases of hypo uh, aplastic anemia in aplastic anemia then in case cases of myelofibrosis where there is dense fibrosis in the medullary in the medullary cavity in the bone marrow 
and uh, it can also be used uh, to diagnose aplastic anemia and in hypoplastic bone marrows because in hypoplastic bone marrows there is decreased cellularity in the bone marrow and in bone marrow aspiration uh, we might not receive so much material so in those cases bone marrow biopsy is preferable then uh, for focal pathologies uh, the pathologies like granulomas metastasis which don't involve all of the bone marrow so in those cases we can take the core of the uh, bone marrow and in that we can uh, identify these lesions then another indication is to assess the topography the cellularity so and the architecture of the bone marrow so where the erythroid cells are located where the megakaryocytic cells are located where the myeloid cells are located so they have a particular topography in the bone marrow so we can also assess that uh, then another needles which are used for bone marrow biopsies are one is islam needle and other is oscud needle what are the contraindications for bone marrow aspiration and biopsy so first is bleeding disorders uh, if it is severe bleeding uh, patient is bleeding there is frank bleeding uh, due to marked decrease in the number of platelets then uh, they get, this is contraindicated uh, then uh, another contraindication is skin infection at the local site so if suppose the skin over the psis is infected so we cannot use that site so we have to look for alternative sites for bone marrow aspiration and another in uh, contraindication is bone disease or bone deformity at the uh, chosen site so uh, here again we have to look for alternate alternate sites for bone marrow now next needle is lumbar puncture needle so in this figure you can see this is the lumbar puncture needle and again it has a stylet so this lumbar puncture needle is used for sampling csf and for csf examination the normal values of csf are the volume normal volume is 100 to 150 ml opening pressure 60 to 180 mmhg then normal counts in adult it is 0 to 5 per cubic millimeter the count of cells in the csf in infants it is 0 to 30 per cubic mm the glucose value in csf is 45 to 80 mg per deciliter and protein value is 15 to 45 mg per deciliter now these values are frequently asked in viva questions now what are the sites for lumbar puncture so in adults uh, we do lumbar puncture between uh, lumbar vertebra 3 and 4 while in children it is little lower uh, between the lumbar vertebra 4 and 5 again this is a viva question now the indications of lumbar puncture are also very important so the diagnostic uh, indications are first of all to diagnose meningitis which can be either viral pyogenic or tubercular then metastasis some tumor is there in the body which has uh, reached to the csf so we can diagnose by lumbar puncture then encephalitis subarachnoid hemorrhage spinal cord tumor and uh, therapeutic indication is to inject a radio opaque uh, dye for myelography and for uh, the chemotherapeutic drugs which can be injected through the lumbar puncture again we can use the lumbar puncture to inject the spinal anesthesia the what are the contraindications if there is a marked increase in the intracranial tension of the patient then this procedure should be avoided should not be done otherwise herniation of the brain stem can occur then patient with brain tumor again lp is not done in any uh, local infective lesion uh, in the site of lp so we will not do the lumbar puncture complications of lumbar puncture is uh, uh, there is a severe headache which is known as post lumbar puncture headache then uh, there can be introduction of infection into the spinal canal uh, by faulty technique of lumbar puncture then uh, brain stem herniation can occur in case of increased intracranial pressure now another important uh, question which is asked in viva is the different findings in the different types of meningitis so um, i will uh, only cover the important points so the up in regard to the appearance of the csf it is cloudy or purulent in case of pyogenic meningitis pyogenic meningitis it is called by the pyogenic bacteria and uh, in this the neutrophils will be the predominant cell and protein levels will be increased while the sugar content will be decreased the organism will be demonstrable by gram staining in case of pyogenic meningitis in tubercular meningitis again this is also caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis but here the naked appearance will show a cobweb coagulum which is a characteristic feature of tubercular meningitis it is also a important mcq question then uh, the uh, pressure will be elevated in all types of meningitis predominant cells in case of tubercular meningitis are lymphocytes 
in tuberculosis uh, lymphocytosis is usually seen so in csf examination also lymphocytes will be the predominant cells now again protein levels will be increased and decreased sugar content will be there as it is also a bacterial infection and how will we demonstrate the organism by means of afb staining now there is aseptic meningitis or viral meningitis where the csf will be having a clear appearance here again the predominant cells will be lymphocytes uh, but the protein and sugar levels will be normal and we cannot uh, demonstrate by gram staining or AV staining because since it is a bacteria. Now next uh, uh, instruments, set of instruments, they are, the, they are used for the ESR estimation and these uh, the ESR can be estimated by two methods. One is Westergren's method and second is the Wintrobe's method. So ESR is erythrocyte sedimentation rate and it is the rate of fall of RBCs in the plasma and it is affected by the uh, Roule formation by the viscosity of the plasma and ratio of the RBCs to the plasma. So there are different stages of the sedimentation of RBCs. This is again an important viva question. First is the Roule formation. This occurs in the first 15 minutes and uh, second stage is formation of fine threads because of fibrinogen and globulin. Then the third stage is uh, the rapid fall and in the last 15 minutes there is pecking of RBCs. Now Westergren's pipette, so this pipette has both sides open that's why it is called a pipette and not a tube. So uh, generally this is also kept in spotting and we don't have to confuse it, uh, confuse writing it like a Westergren's tube. So this is Westergren's pipette not tube because both the sides are open and its length is about 30 centimeters, diameter is 2.5 millimeter and this calibration of 0 to 200 at 1 millimeter uh, interval. So markings are from top to bottom and the advantage of Westergren's pipette over Wintrop's tube is that it is more accurate since it is more calibrated. Now this is the Wintrop's tube, the Wintrop's pipette, sorry Westergren's pipette and this is uh, 30 centimeters long pipette and it has markings from 0 to 200 top to bottom and it gives a uh, fairly accurate reading of the ESR as compared to the Wintrobe's method which is done using the Wintrobe's tube. Now this is Westergren's pipette in a Westergren's stand. This is a Westergren's stand so it helps in uh, keeping this pipette uh, upright because if there is any uh, deviation in the angle of this uh, Westergren pipette then it will result to result in faulty reading of ESR. Now what are the various precautions? The, so the first precaution as I already told that tube should be absolutely vertical and that's why we use Westergren stand and an angle of 3 degrees will increase the ESR by 30%. Now sample should be taken in the black uh, vacutainer uh, which was containing 3.8% weight by volume trisodium citrate in a ratio of 1 is to 4 which I already told you. Uh, now the conditions where we find increased ESR are chronic infections like tuberculosis, chronic inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and hypergammaglobinemia like multiple myeloma and there is a certain conditions with decreased ESR like polycythemia vera where the rate of fall of RBCs is uh, very low because of increased number of RBCs then sickle cell anemia because sickle cell anemias they do not uh, exhibit the Roule formation the sickle cells so the uh, ESR is decreased and there another condition is hyperfibrinogenemia uh, so in this condition also the ESR is decreased. Now next is the Wintrobe's tube. So that was Westergren pipette and this is Wintrobe's tube. It is closed at one end that's why it is called a tube. And uh, but we use EDTA uh, sample for this Wintrobe's tube. While in the Westergren's pipette we were using the citrated sample. Uh, so the length of this tube is 110 millimeters and it is uh, calibrated 1 to 100 millimeters. The internal diameter is same which is 2.5 millimeter. So it has got two types of marking. One marking is from 0 to 20, 0 to 100 top to bottom like this. So 
uh, in some tubes they will be 0, 10, 20 and in some tubes they will be marking like 0, 1, 2, 3. So, it will be it is calibrated there are total 100 markings. So, top to bottom 0 to 10 and bottom to top 0 to 10. So, the marking top to bottom 0 to 10 they are used for estimation of ESR while the markings which are from bottom to up so they are used for estimation of packed cell volume or hematocrit. Now again this tube you can see two types of marking 0 to 10 and here 0 to 10 top to bottom and bottom to top. Now the normal range of ESR is uh, different by the different methods and it is also different in males and females. So, uh, by the Windrose method uh, it is 0 to 7 millimeter in first hour in males, in females it is 0 to 14 millimeters in the first hour, Westergaard method uh, in males it is 0 to 10 mm in first hour and in females it is 0 to 20 mm in first hour. So, you should also know the uh, values as well as the unit of ESR measurement which is millimeter in first hour. Now, another point to note is that the Wintrope tube can also be used to measure the packed cell volume. In packed cell volume, we fill the tube up to the 10 mark, then we centrifuge the sample at 3000 rpm for 30 minutes. After that, we see three columns like this. The bottommost column, it is comprised of the RBCs. This column is of red blood cells. Uh, above this uh, column, there is a buffy coat and above this column is the plasma. So, buffy coat is containing WBCs and platelets and then there is plasma. So, after centrifugation we will take the reading of packed cell volume or the hematocrit and the uh, plasma color of plasma we can use to assess different disease conditions like normal plasma will be straw colored while in jaundice the plasma becomes deep yellow in color. In hyperlipidemias the plasma is turbid while in hemoglobinemias the plasma is red in color. Now, the normal uh, packed cell volume is 40 to 55 percent in males, 38 to 45 percent in case of females and 45 to 60 percent in case of infants. So, these values are again important for the vivas. Then uh, what are the variation in hematocrits which we can see? So, increased PCV can be seen in cases of polycythemia vera and the decreased hematocrit can be seen in case of various anemias. So, in this picture we, uh, we can see this is the column of RBC in the center this cream colored column is, is buffy coat which contains WBC and platelets and above this there is plasma layer. So, uh, in this figure we can see that the blood column is till the 4.5 mark. So, we can say that the uh, PCV here is 45 percent and the uses of this buffy coat is that first it can be used for the lupus erythematosus cell phenomena or known as LE cell phenomena which is used in the diagnosis of LE, uh, SLE and second use is that the buffy coat uh, preparation is used for the detection of malarial, malarial parasite in the quantitative buffy coat method. So, in this quantitative buffy coat method the smear is made from this buffy coat and the RBC column which is uh, RBCs which are present just below the buffy coat. So, this is used for the detection of malarial parasites. So, this question can also be asked uh, that what are the uses of buffy coat. Now, another method of PCV or hematocrit estimation is microhematocrit method in which we use the capillary tubes and it uses very uh, much less amount of blood than the Wintrobes method. Now, next we come to the urinometer. So, urinometer is a uh, instrument which is used to measure the specific gravity of urine and it depends on the amount of solutes which are present in the urine. So, uh, the urinometer is calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius and other methods for specific gravity uh, measurement are refractometer and dipstick methods. Now, dipstick method are uh, not that accurate. The principle of the urinometer method is that the urinometer will float higher in the urine than water because urine is denser than water. Now, uh, normal range of specific gravity again this is very important for viva and MCQs. Uh, for a random sample uh, it is 1.003 to 1.030 while for a 24 hour urine sample the value of specific gravity is 1.015 to 1.025. There is a condition called isosthenuria. 
isosthen urea there is low end fixed specific gravity of 1.010 and it is seen in case of chronic kidney failure because uh, here the specific gravity becomes same as that of plasma because the concentrating ability of kidney is has become zero so the plasma and urine will have the same amount of specific gravity which is 1.010 and it is low and fixed low because this is lower than the 24 hour range of specific gravity so this is low and fixed specific gravity isosthen urea again important viva question now this is a urinometer it has got three parts this is a stem with the markings then this is float and at last there is weight it contains mercury now precautions uh, which we have to uh, keep while uh, measuring the specific gravity of urine so urinometer is calibrated at 20 degrees celsius so we first of all we have to check the temperature which is present in the laboratory and for every 3 degree rise in temperature 0 0.001 will be added to the final result and for every 3 degree celsius fall in temperature 0 0.001 will be subtracted from the result then we also do correction for protein and glucose so we should know the protein and glucose content of the urine and the actual specific gravity will be uh, the observed specific gravity minus 0 0.003 for each 1 gram per dl protein present in the urine and for glucose the observed value we deduct uh, the 0 0.004 for each 1 gram per dl of glucose now you know meter should not touch the walls of the container this is important precaution and reading is taken at the lower meniscus uh, we fill the glass cylinder with urine up to two thirds and minimum urine that we need is about 15 ml again these are important questions which are asked in, in the viva so again we see this uh, the level of the eye should be at the level of the reading so we take leading reading at the uh, lower meniscus uh, this is the cylinder in which we will uh, put the sample of the patient urine sample so we have to fill it with uh, two thirds two thirds of the cylinder we have to fill and minimum amount needed is 15 ml now another important question is the conditions of increased uh, specific gravity like dehydration decreased fluid intake diarrhea vomiting in all these conditions the water content of the body is decreasing so the urine will contain more uh, concentrated uh, solutes and under the condition like fever excessive sweating diabetes mellitus and albuminuria so uh, the increased specific gravity is also known as hyperesthenuria now decreased specific gravity will be seen when we take excessive amount of fluids in condition of diabetes insipidus and in end stage kidney disease now next instrument is sbex albuminometer so it is used for the quantitative estimation of protein for a 24 hour urine sample so it contains our sbex tube with two markings one is u other is r r so the, we use a sbex reagent which contains citric acid and picric acid citric acid is used to dissolve the phosphates in the urine and picric acid precipitates the albumin present in the urine so we take a 24 hour urine sample we mix it properly and we fill the uh, sbex albuminometer up to the mark of u then we add the sbex reagent up to the mark of r we keep it and we uh, measure the amount of precipitate which is formed the thickness of that precipitate now the uh, again important viva question is what are the reference values of protein in urine so normal protein excretion in urine is up, up to 150 milligram in a 24 hour urine sample what is the range for microalbuminuria when we get 30 to 300 milligram uh, of albumin in the urine in a 24 hour urine sample it is known as uh, microalbuminuria then nephrotic range protein urea is more than 3.5 gram per 24 hours so these are the very important uh, reference values which are commonly asked in exams then um, this is sbex albuminometer and uh, another important question in viva what are the causes of protein urea so muscular exertion high fever hypertension orthostatic albuminuria uh, kidney disease like nephrotic syndrome glomerulonephritis renal tuberculosis rcc and renal wave thrombosis so you have to learn this differentials of protein urea now pap smear kit uh, the details i have already uh, explained in the lecture on cervical lesions so this is the endocervical brush with which we take the endocervical sample and this is the ir spatula which we, we uh, with which we take the sample of the transformation zone now needle with syringe sometime in the exam they give you the needle with syringe so you have to uh, tell that parts of this uh, needle with syringe so this is the plunger or piston this is the barrel 
and this is the needle which can be of different gauges and uh, the fun the uses of needle with syringe are to withdraw blood sample of the patient then to perform fine needle aspiration cytology and for bone marrow aspiration also we use this syringe without this needle now this is fnac handle or also known as frenzen's handle or plunger and we use this to perform fine needle aspiration cytology now these are the references and all these instruments they can be uh, kept in the spotting and also they can be asked in uh, various uh, in the viva of pathology practicals so thank you very much